Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal. Yes, you do go farther with signal. Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, murder is legal. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who've stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. This is the Strip, playland of Hollywood. Here are the most elegant gaming houses and nightclubs in the Western Hemisphere. Here are the sumptuous apartments of the great and near great the idols of a million adolescent girls. In the apartment of David Faraday, hero of costume epics and courtroom scandals. Mr. Faraday, wake up, Mr. Faraday. It's time for you to go to Mr. Costair's party. Come on now, Mr. Faraday. It's just me, Jenny O. There aren't no reporters here. I hope we're not bored. Boss, I'm coming in. I know you're tired, boss, but you just got to get up. Trial's all over. Boss, are you all right? That's blood there. Oh, Lord, help me. Mr. Faraday, you've been shot. You're dead. Yes. In the elegant apartment of David Faraday on the Sunset Strip, the body of the screen's swashbuckling hero grows colder. Only two blocks down the street and the guests are arriving at a party given in his honor. A party given by the most important man in Hollywood. A man who's never been in front of a camera. Oh, Clifford, darling, am I late? Oh, Pussy was an angel of patience. I spoiled the last three takes in my hurry to get here, didn't I, Pussy? I'm so anxious to see David, and he won't answer his phone. He hasn't talked to anyone since the trial, even me, his fiancée, and I've been calling him all afternoon. Clifford, what do you do? Hide your winning clients so that the jury can't change its mind? I've been frantic, haven't I, Poochie? If you don't mind, Miss Lorraine, my name is Poochowitz. Poochowitz, not Poochie. Oh. What would my wife think? Poochie, dear, your wife hasn't had a thought since she married you. <laughs> since before, maybe, huh? I wouldn't <laughs> worry about David, Madeline. He was very tired and probably went home to sleep. The trial was very wearing. However, I think that he'll be here. It was very close, wasn't it? I mean, the girl's story was quite sound. But, of course, we all knew that David would get off. With you for a lawyer, how could he miss? After all, you wouldn't want to spoil a perfect record of acquittal. Well, that's really up to the jury. But it was a difficult case. So much publicity complicates any defense. Hello, Madeline. Oh, Charlotte. Oh, darling, you look ravishing. That is, for a girl whose fiancé almost went to prison. Why, if it had been Tommy, I wouldn't have slept a wink. Oh, Mr. Carstair, you know Miss Mannering of Colossal. No, I haven't had the pleasure. Oh, you're the famous lawyer, Clifford Carstair. Oh, I've heard so much about you. No one you have ever defended has ever been convicted. Oh, of course, Madeline, how silly of me. Naturally, you didn't worry with Mr. Carstair defending David. Well, you flatter me. The evidence freed him, not I. Tell me, Mr. Carstair, is it merely evidence that frees all your clients? Naturally. However, the most important factor is careful preparation. Every contingency must be taken care of ahead of time. Of course. In a sense, the the verdict is in before the case ever comes to court. Then it must be confusing if the criminal messed up the crime to start with. I mean, before you could take a hand in arranging the evidence. Well, naturally, Miss Mannering, I try to avoid uh, taking cases that that are too confused. Oh. However, no case is perfect legally. That is because no defendant ever considers the legal angle before the circumstances arise. The perfect crime will never be committed until a lawyer can handle the chain of evidence from the beginning of a crime. 
even before its commission. <laughs> but, of course, that is impossible. Unless he were to commit a crime himself. <laughs> that would hardly be ethical, Miss Mannering. Besides, he'd be unable to defend himself, and thus the whole theory breaks down. Uh, but before we embark upon our life of crime, Miss Mannering, uh, you'll find the bar in the library at the end of the hall. Oh, I... uh, my honor, Miss Mannering. Oh, what a delightful European bow, Mr. Putchewick. <laughs> Wait, Madeline. Yes, Clifford? You don't seem very happy. I, I thought this was to be our night. Our night to celebrate David's acquittal? <laughs> don't be absurd, darling. Oh, what could I do, Maddie? My professional reputation was at stake. Our love, too, darling. Don't forget our love. That was at stake. It was me or your reputation. In Kansas City, I think you would have chosen differently. Kansas City was ten years ago, Maddie. Isn't it enough that I still love you without having to give up everything that I've gained to prove it? Oh, Cliff, you were my only hope. If David had been convicted today, I would have been free, and we could have been married. For the first time since my divorce from Jack, I was going to be happy with you. But this way... Oh, you won your case, but I've lost mine. No, I've lost too, Madeline. What? I've loved you for a long time, even in Kansas City. Even when you left me to marry Jack. Need we talk about that now? Yes. Jack was the handsomer, the younger, the more promising. So you married him, even loving me. And still, I loved you. Your love has strange ways of showing itself then and now. You set yourself out to break my husband. You had him disbarred, ruined his career. Was that love? Well, I knew you'd leave him after he was no longer a shiny new prize. I didn't leave Jack. He left me. After the automobile accident, the night you had him disbarred, he said he didn't want me to be saddled with a cripple, so he just disappeared. I couldn't come back to you then. That would have been crawling, and I won't crawl for any man. But you'd crawl to David to save your career, to keep your beautiful face in front of the public. Well, that's something else, something you could have saved me from if you'd loved me, instead of having David acquitted today. You'll be quite safe now, Maddie. You see, David is dead. You mean you... Something like that. Yes. With the prologue of Murder is Legal, the Signal Oil Company brings you another of the strange tales of the Whistler. Now, before we return to our story, I'd like to ask you a question. Are you planning on repainting your car before the day arrives when you can replace it with a new one? If you're like most motorists, your answer is not if you can make the present finish last out the duration. Well, right there is where your signal gasoline dealer can be of real service to you. He now features the famous Venus One Application Auto Polish. In one easy operation, Venus removes dingy road film to bring out the true color of your car and then leaves the renewed finish sparkling under a protective glaze of Carnauba and Ozosirite, the hardest and most waterproof waxes known to science. Made by the Whiz Company, nationally famous for finer quality automotive products, Venus Polish is just one of your signal dealer's complete line of Whiz items to make your car look and run better longer. Next time you're at your neighborhood signal gasoline dealers, look over his Whiz products. You'll find motor rhythm, metal polish, car wax, radiator cleaner, upholstery cleaner, and many other upkeep items. Like all your signal dealer services, Whiz products have proven their ability to help your car last longer and go farther. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Madeline Lorraine, the glamorous picture star, has just heard the startling news that David Faraday, her fiancé, is dead. What makes it more startling is the fact that Clifford Carstairs, the famous lawyer, has practically admitted to her that he murdered David, his client. <laughs> it's so funny. Did you understand me? Yes, Clifford, darling. David has been murdered. Well, I thought you'd be pleased, but... Oh, I... I am, darling. I am. <laughs> Just that it's so funny, so so horribly funny. You wouldn't risk losing a case, but you'd risk this, this crime. Oh, you're a born comedian, Cliff. 
Poochie should hire you. Stop it, Madeline. <laughs> Why? Don't people laugh when they're happy? My career is safe. So's yours. Our love is safe. Why, it's wonderful. But what about the police? You and me are... Are we safe, too? Mm. Yes. Yes, I think so. The police will discover that Jack, your former husband, committed the murder. Jack? But I don't understand. Is he here? How did you... How could he... Oh, one at a time, sweet. Yes, yes, he's here in Los Angeles. I saw him last week. I had occasion to cut through Pershing Square on my way to see a client. He was... He was sitting with his wooden leg propped on a bench feeding the pigeons. He's changed, Madeline. I hardly recognized him. He didn't see me, but I made inquiries. I can find him when I need him. But I still don't understand. If you killed David, Shh. I... Well, you did, though. So why should the police... Very simple. Elementary matter of preparation. Oh. Faraday was shot with a gun registered to your husband. Uh, you've had it for years, but uh, no one will know that. Also, there are the marks of a peg leg on the balcony. The room was broken into. He had uh, plenty of motive and... Besides, I think I can persuade him to confess. Uh, that is, if I make it sufficiently profitable. No, Cliff. No, we can't do it. Between us, we wrecked Jack's life. We can't make him pay for our crimes, too. Don't be silly. He won't be convicted. None of my clients ever is. Your glamorous friend was quite right. I've wanted to arrange my own crime, set the evidence beforehand, and I have. This is perfect, Madeline. It'll be a clear case of self-defense. With me as his attorney, Jack is a cinch for acquittal. It's precious, Cliff. Darling, you're a genius. You arrange everything the way you want it, don't you? It's wonderful. And so funny. So terribly funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you've planned the perfect crime, haven't you, Mr. Carstairs? Madeline thinks it's very funny. Funny and clever, Mr. Carstairs. Yes, Madeline Lorraine's husband, her first husband, that is, is a cinch for acquittal. That is, if he cooperates. And he will. Won't he, Mr. Carstairs? You know he will. Hello, Jack. Down. Glad to see you again. I'll bet. You were pretty sure of me, weren't you, Carstair? Pretty sure I'd come when you sent for me. You came, I see. Ah, the great Carstair wins again. Someday you'll overstep yourself like I did. I'm waiting. Why be so bitter, Jack? I've always liked you personally. You know that. Sure, you only broke my career. Had me disbarred for one little slip. And I get drunk and lose a leg in Madeline. That's all there was in my life, my career and Madeline. I'd be dead now, but for two things. Watching her rise in the world and waiting for you. Well, that was a long time ago, Jack. Why don't you forget it? I did what I had to do. There was no rancor in it. It was nothing personal. Won't you believe that? Maybe. How is Madeline? I guess she's going to marry that Hollywood heel. Too bad, Carstair. Looks like you lose out again. I've got to hand it to you, though. You protected him. I hadn't thought you had so many scruples, Carstairs. He was my client. I had to protect him. Uh, I have another client now, though, and uh, I need your help. Well, well. I never thought I'd hear the great Carstairs yelling for help. You should have thought of that before you had me disbarred. Sorry, chum. Well, I told Madeline you wouldn't be any good to us. But she insisted that I contact you. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, I didn't consider it was necessary. You know I see Madeline. I know you still love her. The story, please. You uh, do, don't you, Jack? The story, fast and good. Well, uh, Madeline, like all figures in the public eye, had some things in her past that the fans might not have approved of. It was essential that she keep them a secret. So? Well, David Faraday knew of these things and uh, was using them to blackmail her into marrying him. Late this afternoon, she met him at his apartment. The colored boy was out. No one saw her. They quarreled. Uh, she had that uh, old gun of yours in her bag. She shot him, Jack. The poor fool. Poor little fool. Is there any chance for a car stare? If it comes to open court, not one in a million. I'd do what I could, naturally, but there's not one chance in a million of getting off with less than life. How can you keep it from coming to court? By acting fast. They haven't found the body yet. 
When they do, the newspapers will be howling for a conviction. It's election year, and the DA will take a fast confession and not ask too many embarrassing questions. That's where you come in. Wait a minute. I'm not burning for anyone else's murders, wooden leg and all. I'm not asking you to burn for it, Jack. You see, I know this DA. He won't even fight a self-defense plea if it uh, looks good at all. Uh, with Maddie, there's too much supplemental evidence. They'd have to make it second degree. With you, it's a cinch. I'm Faraday's lawyer. My dictaphones will show his reactions to your being in town. How he wanted to send for you. How he, how he was afraid of you. Clear cut. Self-defense. Oh, Madeline would never chance. But I'd stake my reputation, even my life, on getting you off scot-free. What makes you think they'll believe this confession? Even if he did have a motive for getting me there. In the first place, that gun was registered to you. In the second, I've checked over the scene. He had a paper knife in his hand. I arranged the room to look as if a fight had occurred. Also, there are marks of a peg leg in the soft ground outside his balcony. In other words, if I don't cooperate... The police will probably pick you up anyway, precisely. And if I do? I am empowered to offer you the sum of $10,000. Fifteen. I won't haggle. Sorry, Carstairs, I can't see it. It's a fine deal. I go to the chair for Madeline's murder, and you pay $15,000 over to my widow. Maybe you'll even throw in a crypt at the cemetery, but it's not enough. Uh, let me restate my position, Jack. Perhaps I didn't make it clear. On the one hand... You confess the circumstances of Faraday's death, and I'll guarantee to get you off. On the other, I tip off the district attorney, and 90 to 1, they indict you anyway. Without my support, I don't think you'd have much chance of acquittal, especially when the blackmail attempts that you made on Faraday come out. I never tried to blackmail Faraday, and you know it. No, as his lawyer, I'd be in a position to know these details, don't you think? Did I ever tell you I hated your guts? Frequently, in Kansas City. I didn't say it loud enough. Well, Carstairs, you've got me over a barrel. There's not much I can do. Good. But I want it in writing. Don't you think that's uh, too risky? And besides, it wouldn't be worth the paper it's written on. Maybe, but that way I know you won't double-cross me. I'd trust Maddie if she were in it alone. With you, I want a contract, you might say. Something to hold over your head. Very well. We'll make it out right now. Okay, you phrase it, but put in the money and that you guarantee my acquittal. Hmm, we don't trust one another or even like one another. But in this, you have my word. Well, oh, Carstair, we're partners now. We've a contract for crime. Shall we drink to our new venture? And to how much I hate your guts. <laughs> Yes, a good legal partnership. Practically a corporation, if you add Madeline. And three such brilliant people, too. They're sure to make a go of it, wouldn't you say? What? Well, who's there? Quiet, it's me, Jack. Jack? Oh, darling. I, I mean, it is four in the morning and I have to be on the set at six. Can't you wait, Jack? I heard what you said the first time. Let me in the French door. Jack. You haven't come near me for ten years. Tonight I thought maybe you needed me. I do, Jack. I have for a long time. I sent for you often. You never came. I wanted you to have your chance, as I didn't have mine. You've got everything now. You're a big star. You've a fine home, jewels. What more could you want? Well... Safety. I'll give you that, darling. Was what Carstair told me true? Yes. Poor kid. But nothing's going to happen. I just wanted to tell you that. This is one case Carstair won't dare lose. I know. But that's not what I want. What do you want, Maddie? Do I have to tell you, Jack? After all this time, do I have to say it? Yes. I guess I... I don't belong in Hollywood, Jack. I'm a fake. I go around being Madeline Lorraine, hard, indiscreet, sophisticated, just as Hollywood as I can be. But underneath, I'm just Mrs. John Tennant from Kansas City. Do you mean that, Madeline? Don't you know when you're being proposed to? And don't say this is so sudden. 
Not, not now. Darling. <laughs> I tried so hard to be tough. I thought I was. Until tonight. And when this happened, I couldn't put on the act any longer. What about Carstairs? Oh, he wants to marry me when this is over. And you? Not anymore. You know what I want. All right, Madeline. If that's what you want, truly. <laughs> Tell no one anything. We'll go through with this. When it's over, I'll have $15,000. We'll go away someplace. Brazil's a good spot. We'll start over. 10000 should see us through. I thought you said 15000 I need the rest. I have a debt to pay. A 10-year-old debt. <laughs> Yes, you'll go through with it, Jack. The papers next morning have the story. David Faraday, swashbuckling movie star, was killed in a drunken brawl. His confessed slayer is John Ternant, ex-husband of actress Madeline Lorraine. Ternant allegedly came to the star's apartment at the request of Faraday's lawyer to sign an affidavit regarding his divorce with Miss Lorraine, which took place in Kansas City eight years ago. An argument ensued, and Faraday, according to Ternant, seemed intoxicated, attacking with a paper knife. In the struggle that followed, the actor was killed. The renowned Clifford Carstare is representing Ternant. Gentlemen of the jury, the defense rests. Firm in the knowledge that no American would convict a man for defending his life from a foul murder. You were wonderful, Cliff. Thanks, Maddie. Let's walk down the hall a minute. It's a good policy for me to leave the room now. And besides, I want to talk to you. All right, Cliff. Well, Cliff. Uh, what? Well, you wanted to walk and talk, you said. Well, yes, I, uh, I, uh, well, I want the date for our wedding set, Maddie. Oh, don't rush me so, Cliff. Rush you? Why, it's been two months since David's death. You just keep putting me off. You think that's fair, Maddie? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't given it very much thought. Well, you still love me, don't you? That hasn't changed, has it? Well, everything changes, Cliff. There's nothing certain, except, of course, a car stare verdict. You always win, Cliff. You always win, except this time. Well, I told you the verdict was a cinch. No, I didn't mean the trial. I meant me. You lose me. Oh, Maddie, you can't do this to me. I don't see that I'm doing anything to you. I'm just doing something for me. Not for Puchowitz, nor our public, nor David, nor you. Just me. I'm going back to Jack, Cliff. After the farce in there is over, we're going to go away and start all over. Oh, Madeline, you... You owe me more than this. Do I? I'm sorry, Cliff. I... I only killed a man for your sake. That was your idea, Cliff, not mine. And then that night... When you told me about it, and about how you were going to use Jack to protect us, well, it was suddenly so horribly funny that I laughed. Remember? In that instant, faced with a murder, I realized what I really wanted. And it wasn't you at all, Cliff. It wasn't Hollywood or my name in lights, either. It was Jack. And going back to being simple, being just his wife. And it was so tragically funny. It doesn't amuse me, Maddie. What if I were to expose your connection with Faraday in the killing? Remember the contract you signed with Jack, dear. You can't touch him without putting yourself in the chair. As for me, well, I don't want my public anymore. They can think what they please about me. I'm a different woman, Cliff, than the one who came to your party that night. And if I've been foolish, I'll atone for it. And that's my answer, Cliff, and it won't change. I'm sorry. The great Carstairs has lost this verdict. But that's not all of this strange story. The Whistler will be back to tell you what really happened. Meantime, I want to answer a question which, judging by the number of inquiries, must be puzzling a lot of drivers today. It's this. Since certain gasoline ingredients have gone to war, aren't all of today's gasoline the same... No, indeed. 
If you've tried many brands in your car, you've already noticed a difference in performance, and I'll tell you why. Each oil company has its own refining method for its own brand of gasoline. Well, as thousands of Western drivers who keep a close record of their gasoline mileage know, the Signal refining method has for years been famous for its extra mileage. Signal is frank in telling you that with certain ingredients reserved for fighting planes, Signal can't promise all the brilliant performance you enjoyed with pre-war Signal gasoline and which you'll again find in further improved Signal post-war gasoline. But the name Signal still stands for the finest quality gasoline that can be made. And Signal still places the emphasis on mileage. That's why with gasoline rations, Signal Go Farther Gasoline is more than ever your best buy today. If you haven't tried Signal Go Farther Gasoline in your car, there never was a better reason or better time for getting acquainted with your neighborhood Signal gasoline dealer. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, of course, Jack was acquitted. You won again, Carstairs. Everything turned out just as you said it would. Except, of course, Madeline. You killed a man for nothing, but it was a perfect crime. The evidence was arranged as only a lawyer could do it. But then Jack was a lawyer too once. You know what a good lawyer with, shall we say, $5,000 can do, don't you, Mr. Carstairs? thousand here and there to the proper people that tip off to the police. You've done it often enough yourself. A frame-up, they call it, don't they? Hello, Carstairs. Remember me, Reynolds, district attorney's office? I want to ask you a few questions. Oh, well, sit down. Thank you. Always glad to help you, boys. Good. Then answer this one. Why did you kill David Faraday? What? A colored man says you came in that afternoon. Says you paid him to say he was out. Says he was scared to talk before. Why, that's ridiculous. He wasn't anywhere around. Then you admit you were there. I admit nothing. How about the gunsmith downtown? He says you paid him $1,000 to file that identification number on a gun. You haven't got a chance, Costair. I've been framed. It's an open and shut case. Funny, we'd never have thought of it. We got the tip from that guy you forced to confess to the crime. He skipped to Brazil. Afraid uh, we'd make him stand trial for perjury. We wouldn't, though. In our business, we know how easy it is for a smart lawyer like you to frame a guy and force him into a confession. I've been framed, I tell you. It was his gun. Tell that to the judge. Maybe he'll believe you. No, Carstairs. Even you can't talk your way out of this one. Yes, Carstair. Framed. But in this case, frame for a murder you did commit. Monday at 9 o'clock, the Whistler will bring you another strange tale, the curious story of the Bells of Aberdobe. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen, story by Robert Libet, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking. Remember to let every traffic signal remind you you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.